Good morning. It's wonderful to be together on this third Sunday of Easter. Hallelujah. While we continue to rejoice in our hearts, we of course hold the sorrow of yesterday's events very present. So we join today in prayer for the victims and families affected by the horrific events at Bondi Junction. I know that you will be praying for all of those people and a prayer of thanksgiving for all of those brave souls who stepped in to do something. After Mass this morning, we have morning tea. Um, I've seen the food arrived. It looks amazing. So I do hope you can come and join us straight over there in the Murray Room. Our principal celebrant this morning is Father Anthony Coloma. Our servers are Bob Barber, Mary Tutman, Baruch Tekle, Kiab Tekle. Our readers this morning, Margaret Jones and Ariane Callaghan. Conducting the choir this morning is Sister Janine French, playing organ and piano is Robert Angeli, and our psalmist is Kath Marnie. And bringing up the gifts this morning, Maria and Michael Mather. I invite you please to stand and join us in singing our entrance hymn. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today, in a special way, we celebrate this Mass, recalling the men and women who were significantly impacted by the atrocity at Bondi Junction. We pray for those who died, and we pray for those who remain and are deeply impacted by the wound of that event. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all his prophets and that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping these commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of the bread. They were still talking about all this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it, and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses in the prophets and in the Psalms, has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written, that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Will you ever give up on someone? Two months ago, UK's national tabloid, the Daily Express, posted an article on their online platform. The title of the article was, My boyfriend's cancer was ruining my mental health, so I broke up with him. You don't find that wrong? Have you ever given up on your relationship with someone because of a cancer diagnosis or the person's circumstances became senselessly overwhelming for you? What will make you give up on someone? And have people ever given up on you? Persistent failure, chronic frustration, the nearness of death have a way of wounding our souls. And when our dreams, our sense of purpose, Our sources of resource are dashed to the ground, trample upon, we dash to the confines and spaces of our old comfort zones, seeking for solace and for relief. And in most cases, when failure, frustration, or death visits us, we are never the same. Thus, we can understand, if not appreciate, why the two disciples decided to dash away from Jerusalem and take the road back to Emmaus. For the one that they thought would redeem Israel was crucified and has died in a deplorable, ignoble manner. Their dreams, their hopes, their resources were dashed to the ground. So they dashed on their way to Emmaus in shock, in shame, and in desperation. In the traditional reading of the Lucan narrative on the road to Emmaus, we have always taken for granted that it was two men who took the road away from Jerusalem. If you Google, have you heard of Google? Thank you. If you Google the Lucan account on the road to Emmaus and view the various artworks and images about it, It has always been imagined that two men journeyed together and two men broke bread with Jesus. But there are recent scholarships that point to a more intimate relationship 
that operated between these two disciples. Some scholars suggested that the unnamed disciple is Cleopas' wife, Mary of Clopas. And if you remember the Johannine account on the crucifixion, she is the woman standing beside her sister, Mary, Jesus' mother, at the foot of the cross. But we need not join the brouhaha among scripture scholars. What is critical for us is the event that involved two grieving individuals. They can either be old mites or a couple making a journey away from the place where their hearts were broken and crestfallen. It is the story of two grieving disciples who left Jerusalem seeking to make their lives better after the death of the very man whom they have placed all their hopes and dreams in. However, this is also about us, those who have given up on others and those who have experienced isolation because the others have given up on us. In your raw experience of despair and desolation, who were the women and men who continued to journey with you? When you experienced shock, shame, and desperation, who stuck it with you? Who cried with you in your moments of shock, shame, and desperation? Who are the people who never gave up on you? No one. I hope you have at least one at the back of your heads. Because as people of the faith, we are aware that in our experience of despair and desolation, the God of life visits us to encourage us, to be with us, and to enable to dwell in safety as the psalmist have reminded us today. This God did the same with the two disciples, and God journeyed with them in the path that they were taking. Although at first they did not recognize the resurrected Christ in their midst, they did sense that there was something special with the person who joined them. He broke their whinging by breaking the word for them, showing them the path not towards despair, but towards a life and a better understanding of the mission of the crucified Christ. In retrospect, they claimed, did not our hearts burn within us as Christ talked to us on the road and explained the scripture to us? Some of you might be wondering how come the priest is talking about the gospel on Emmaus, because that was not the gospel that was read. The gospel regarding the road to Emmaus is the gospel immediately preceding the gospel that we have just heard today. So for those who are wondering, you're on the right Sunday. So don't be bothered. But going on, even when they invited Jesus to stay with them, they still did not recognize the risen Christ. But at table... When the unrecognized Christ blessed, broke, and shared the bread with them, only then did their eyes were opened and recognized the Master. Recognition relied on the remembered words and actions that Jesus said and did. The disciples experienced the power of the risen Christ in the breaking of the word and in the blessing, breaking, sharing of the bread. They encountered the God of life through the sacred scriptures and the Eucharist. And this encounter transformed them from grief away from Jerusalem to deep joy towards Jerusalem. The encounter brought them healing. And on that same night, this is the gospel that we have heard today. The two disciples went straight in haste back to Jerusalem where the fearful, grieving apostles were on lockdown to announce to them, the Lord is truly risen. 
And immediately after their confession, Christ showed up, offering them peace and joy. The presence of the risen Christ brings peace and joy. When your heart started to burn for sheer joy and jubilation, who were the women and men who made it with you? And how is the experience of the scriptures and the Eucharist transformed you, healed you to become the better version of yourself, not just for yourself, but for others who live in fear and in brokenness? Is the reception of God's word and the bread of life in the Eucharist changing you to become an Easter people marked by deep joy and jubilation? How come you all look like you lost the lottery? By the way, did you notice the change in the language of Peter in his address in the Acts of the Apostles? In the first reading today, he seems to have forgotten his betrayal and the way he acted when Christ was being condemned, crucified, and when he died. And even after Jesus was laid in the tomb, Peter remained fearful. Yet when he encountered the transforming presence of the risen Lord, he experienced forgiveness and healing. The first reading reveals a changed Peter. And in that text, we find a Peter who is filled with deep joy and spoke with courage, faith, and hope. We are an Easter people. It is faith in the risen Christ that is the source of our joy and inner peace. Pope John Paul II, do you remember him? In an address that he gave in Adelaide, South Australia, in 1986. Were you alive in 1986? I thought you were younger. But on that same year, when the world learned that Imelda Marcos has 3,000 pairs of shoes, Pope John Paul II said, We do not pretend that life is all beauty. We are aware of darkness and sin, of poverty and pain. But we know Jesus has conquered sin and passed through his own pain to the glory of the resurrection. And we live in the light of Christ's paschal mystery, the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. John Paul added, we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. We are not looking for a shallow joy, but a, rather a joy that comes from faith, that grows through unselfish love, that respects the fundamental duty of love of neighbor, without which it will be unbecoming to speak of joy. We realize that joy is demanding, and it demands unselfishness. It demands a readiness to say with Mary, be it done unto me according to your word. May the faith that we profess give us the courage to not just easily give up on anyone. And may the Easter joy and peace nestled in our hearts embolden us to persevere in this life with selfless charity. And in the words of the creed, let us profess the symbol of our faith. I believe in God. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Dear friends, with the greeting of peace, the risen Jesus freed his disciples from sin and shame. Thankful for this gift ourselves, let us pray with love for all our sisters and brothers. For a new spirit of mercy and forgiveness in the world, may ancient enmities be set aside and all vengefulness renounced. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may it confess its sinful betrayals of the Gospels and be reborn in integrity of heart. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to words and actions that belittle and dehumanize others, that every human being will receive the respect that is their right as a child of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims and families affected by the horrific events of Bondi Junction yesterday, for the repose of the souls that have passed away and all those affected by these events, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the recently deceased, and for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time. May God's love come to perfection in them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, who else, what else are we praying for? God of abiding love and mercy, we thank you for calling us to stretch beyond our limitations and to live as witnesses to your risen Son. Help us to live as repentant, forgiven, loving members of Christ's body. In God's name we pray forever and ever. Amen. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, 
And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, all the religious, and all the families gathered this morning. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Those taking communion to the sick, please come forward. Are there any announcements? There's morning tea. On this direction or on, th on that side? <laughs> Last Friday, I celebrated a wedding at Pakalbin. Uh, the wedding was at 3, so I was there by 2 p.m. at Peterson House Chapel. And uh, the bride arrived at half past 3. Uh, but since I'm a Catholic priest, I'm not allowed to complain and to whinge. Uh, so we celebrated the wedding. Then after the wedding, I left at around 4 p.m., I was driving, cruising, I arrived. I was very happy because I wasn't caught by the traffic of those going out of Newcastle, then driving on my, towards this direction. And as soon as I was nearing the Newcastle Eye Center, I decided to take a detour and go to Mayfield to buy my Asian fried rice. But then I realized I forgot something in Pokolbin, so I have to go back and get it. So. When I arrived in Newcastle, it was already past six, and I was so exhausted. But then I learned of this research uh, that helps you not forget. Uh, it's a research on uh, solving the dementia problem. And then I was reading the research, and it said that uh, they used hair follicles. So I reckon I will be forgetful until the day I die. <laughs> Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to conform, confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by His blessing forever and ever. May God, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance forever and ever. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner of this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. 
and may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.